yo, yo. Are we recording? Yes, we are recording. All right. Let me take this thing off. I'm glad I look at the, the viewer. I could see that I was wearing this. And by the way, I'm not wearing this because I'm trying to make a fashion statement. I'm just trying to be better about keeping the sun off my skin. Um, and besides, I look like Thurston Howell III from Gilligan's Island when I wear that thing. So I don't want you guys making fun of me for that. Anyway, uh, hope you guys are doing well. It is a super humid, breezy, super humid day here, which is kind of the norm in late spring here in my part of Texas, um, which kind of ties into what I'm doing today. Today is fungicide day, right? Clearies, okay? We'll talk about that in just a second. I actually already shot this video once before about four or five weeks ago, whenever Easter weekend was. I did my first fungicide application, but with it being the holiday weekend and my wife's birthday, dinner plans and such, I needed to just wrap up the application and I didn't finish shooting. And I tried to make a video out of it, but it wasn't working, it was kind of lame, and I thought to myself, you know what? I'll just shoot the next thing that I do to the lawn. And little did I know that the next thing I would be doing to my lawn would be four or five weeks later, which is now. <laughs> Because the only thing I've been doing for the last four or five weeks is mowing it on occasion and it's getting more frequent now as it's getting warmer but that's all I've been doing is mowing. I still haven't fertilized and we'll get to all that in just a second but today it's time to do the reapplication of the fungicide and I figure that I'm also going to throw in some of this too. This is Tel Star P and this is an insecticide. Fun fact is that this fungicide and this insecticide well, they're both, by definition, pesticides. When you think of the word pest or pesticide, you think of ants, mosquitoes, and flies, and blah, 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 blah. But by definition, a pest is anything that's like a nuisance, right? Or an annoyance. Well, so are fungal spores, because they do cause a nuisance. They do stress the lawn, even kill the lawn, and make parts of the lawn look bad. So a fungus qualifies as a pest. Now, here's an important little bit of information. Learn to read the label on every product that you are looking to use on your lawn. Read the label for restrictions like temperature, don't apply it because it's so hot, and don't apply it on this grass, don't apply it during this time of year, blah, 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 right? Here's this other reason to read labels. You see people recommend a great product, an effective product for the wrong symptom. And so many times I've seen people recommend Disease X for somebody that's dealing with dollar spot. You need to read the label because the active ingredient in Disease X is azoxystrobin. Great effective active, active ingredient, but it doesn't treat for dollar spot. It's not on the label. Now, having said that, right? So no Disease X for my situation, although you might have diseases that azoxystrobin treats for. The uh, Cleary's active ingredient is thiophanate methyl. That one does treat for dollar spot. Another option you have is propiconazole. That one treats for multiple lawn diseases. One of them is dollar spot. That is the fungicide that I used four or five weeks ago on my lawn. Anyway, when we look at the label, the application rate of uh, Cleary's, label rate is two to four ounces for every 1,000 square feet. Now, that's for treating dollar spot. There are different application rates for different lawn diseases. The other thing that's worth noting about the label is the label tells you that you are to apply this with two gallons of carrier. Now, normally, most everything you apply on a home lawn is gonna be one gallon of carrier or water, right? Per 1,000 square feet. This label says to use two gallons of water. Uh, time to throw in what I need to throw in. now. What's cool about these is they have their own little measuring section here, but some of these don't work so well. Like with this, it's a white, milky kind of liquid, then it, it's hard to see. So while it's, a, it's easier to see on this one, because the plastic is also clear, it's a little thicker on this one. So I actually have to use a cup. I could use a syringe, but again, the application rate is two to four ounces for every 1,000 square feet. I have 1.6 square feet in the front. So if I'm gonna go at the two ounce rate, then I need 3.2 ounces of 
clearies in my mix for my front yard, right? Simple math. Okay, and before I do that, actually, I put the gloves on, man. Okay, now, the only other thing going in my tank mix, uh, aside from the fungicide, will be the insecticide. The active ingredient in Telstar P is bifenthrin. Very much like with the fungicide, the application rate depends on what you're treating for, what lawn disease you're treating for. Same thing here, the application rate depends on what insect you're treating for. I am treating for ants, and the application rate for ants is 0.5 to 1 ounce per 1,000 square feet. And if you've watched my previous videos, you're probably expecting me to go with some reduced rate. And with the insecticide, I don't do that, only because I do need good coverage. Um, with my backyard being a green belt, there are a lot of bugs, a lot of insects. So instead of going with the minimum rate even at 0.5 ounces, I'm going to go at 0.75 ounces. So 0.75 ounces times the 1.6 square feet in my front yard, and that comes out to 1.2 ounces for my front yard. And again, this has got the measuring thing, but I've already used the cup, so I'm just gonna use it again. 1.2 ounces for my front yard. Down here. Let's get some more water in here to make my 3.2 gallons for the front yard. All right, let's go put the boots on, spray the front yard. next morning having to reshoot the closing to the video because after I finished shooting myself spraying the uh, front yard my dumbass didn't notice that at some point between there and here I must have moved the ND filter on the lens and footage was way too dark and I didn't know that was a problem until I got inside and saw the footage I went man I can't use this anyway that takes care of fungicide for now and the insecticide um, the next thing has to be some NPK right uh, I haven't fertilized once, as I've already said. This season, I haven't fertilized anything. Um, and, you know, I guess one reason I haven't done it is I haven't had the time. That's one. But I also haven't been too eager, you know, in fertilizing the lawn for one, what may be dumb, silly, stupid, asinine reason. So I've got a new mower coming in. I ordered a new mower. I got a new machine that I'm waiting to be delivered. And, and there's so many bugs flying around. Um, and a part of me, in my mind, I just keep thinking, you know what, I don't, I don't want the lawn to be too thick, too dense for the new mower. Even though the new mower is super, it's a lot heavier, it's about 80 pounds heavier than what I, the one I currently use. And I, I don't know, a part of me just wants to start with a thin lawn. Um, and I mean, it hasn't needed any fertilizer, as you could see, right? I mean, it's green enough, and it's in the front, definitely, you can see it get tons of sun, tons of air circulation, right? Running up and down the street. Back here, it's a little more confined. There's way more shade. So it isn't as thick in the back as it is in the front. But anyway, so a part of me is just kind of wanting to keep the lawn a little thin for the new mower so I can learn it. I just didn't want to deal with potential issues of it floating too soon after I got the mower. Again, maybe that's dumb, but really honestly it hasn't needed the fertilizer but anyway let's wrap this one up man uh, before i go off on a tangent let me get out of here i'll let you guys go thank you very much for watching and i will see you pretty soon with some fertilizer footage all right bye